but there isn't a huge difference between using cash for a transaction where you're purchasing coffee, where you're not actually disclosing who you are and where you've got enough money in order to exchange for that cup of coffee. Now, well, wait a minute. I, th I think I, that I, I have a hard time with that. I think it's very different than handing over a $5 bill to buy a cup of coffee. Well, I, I, I think what she's suggesting is that we used to have an economy that ran entirely on cash, and cash leaves absolutely no record. When it, if I hand you a ten, you know, ten thousand dollars worth of cash in a briefcase, there's no blockchain out there that records the transaction. That is not true. Banks receive the serial numbers of new bills from the Bureau, the Bureau of Engraving and Printing. Every single bill from the United States Bureau of Engraving and Printing says this document is legal tender for all debts, public and private. I, I, so I that is not yeah, true. I don't disagree. But the transaction where I handed you the bills did not leave a record. Ileana, I, I'm, I'm still kind of skeptical. But I, I think I see what you're getting at, that it's, it's the, the effort, the attempt, is to try to create a more robust system where literally every single transaction is granularly tracked from beginning to end all the way through its entire life cycle. Is, is that kind of it, Ileana? That's correct. And when you add in the more decentralized nature, what often results is higher efficiencies. And instead of relying on a series of intermediaries to facilitate one particular transaction, you can really focus on the value-added activities that each of the parties is injecting as part of the process. 